Hey there, in this video we're going to take a look at how you can record vocals in Cubase AI and LE. In an earlier video as part of this series, I showed you how to set up a microphone and an audio interface. So if you haven't watched that video yet, it might be a good idea just to take some time to watch that video first so that you're set up and ready to go to record your own vocals. Let's recap a couple of things inside of Cubase to make sure that your routing is all correct. First of all, let's go into the studio setup and open the control panel and make sure our hardware device is selected. Then we can go in and check the latency. So if you're experiencing delay through your microphone, your buffer size might be too high. So you might want to reduce this down whilst you're recording your vocals and then you can move it up more if you're struggling in terms of your system performance and your computer. Now I'm going to check my audio connections. So I'm going up to studio, selecting audio connections, and I'm ensuring that the Steinberg UR22 Mark II is selected as my audio device for my input and output channels. Now we've got our input and output routing sorted and our audio hardware selected, it's time to add a track. So I'm clicking on the plus button and I'm going to add an audio track. First up, I'm going to select the left channel, which is the first channel in the UR22 Mark II, and that's where the microphone is plugged in. I'm going with the mono channel because there's only one channel. Mono is one, stereo is obviously two. I'm naming the track, and when I select add track, it appears over in the track list. I can once again double check the routing if I want to by clicking on this tab here in the inspector and you can see that input routing and you can change it if you had say plugged a microphone into channel two or three or four if you had additional audio inputs. I can also see the routing here in the mix console. On the track itself, we've got the red button which is activated. That's telling Cubase that you wanna record on that channel. The orange button is the monitor button and that lets us hear what's coming through the input channel in our headphones. If you need the click track, it's down in the bottom right hand corner and you can activate that to get some concept of time whilst you're recording. Next, it's time to make sure that you're comfortable with the recording setup. So make sure your microphone's plugged in and adjust the microphone so that it's in a good position. This is a condenser mic, so that mesh area really needs to be in front of the singer's mouth a few inches away. A pop filter will stop fast moving air from impacting the microphone, and this is especially important for words that start with P. If your microphone needs phantom power, then you can turn it on on your audio interface. Lastly, it's a matter of plugging your headphones in to the headphone socket and adjusting the volume. So just play your track and make sure it's not too loud. It's usually a good idea to do that before you put the headphones on. I was talking about direct monitoring before and Steinberg interfaces mean that you can get a blend between the sound that's going on in the door and a direct sound from the microphone itself, meaning that latency is not an issue because in effect, you're monitoring what you're singing direct from the actual device. Make sure your level is correct. So you'll be able to see on the meters on the input channels in Cubase if it's peaking. It's a good idea to test the loudest part of your track first. When you're ready, it's time to hit record. Make sure you give yourself enough time before you have to start singing so that you can get comfortable. Writing words from my fingertips Coming so freely Whilst hiding behind the bright lights and the mystery keys Alerting me so clearly Waiting patiently and answering a conversation that I shouldn't be It's usually a great idea to do a few takes just to warm up and keep them. But then you can also start to break the song down into sections, like do a verse or do a line. You can never have too many options when it actually comes to mixing the vocals down. So it's however you feel comfortable performing whilst the door's recording you. 
Once you've finished your first take, record another take. Keep recording until you feel like you're comfortable and happy. We're recording on the same track here, so it's just recording information over the top of the previous take. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you how you can comp that. Now that we've got a few vocal takes, it's time to do some housework. Housework basically means tidying up. So I always look at the start of the take and edit it. I use the range tool a lot when I'm editing vocals to remove sections of the track where the singer isn't actually singing. Of course, one of the most important things to do is to listen back to what's been recorded. So start to make notes on what you like about the take and what you don't like about the take. One of the great things about Cubase AI and LE is we can chop up these individual sections of a vocal take and we can isolate independent parts. And the cool thing is once we've isolated these different parts, we can go and start to swap in between different takes. So it's a matter of listening through again to individual sections and then clicking on this little triangle here to access all of the takes that we've just recorded. So you might have done three or four, you might have done 20. The more takes you record, the more options you have when it comes to editing and of course, more decisions that you have to make. You can use the scissors to continue to make more cuts in this vocal take, giving you more options on smaller chunks or parts of the vocal take. If you look at a professional recording, a lot of the time it can even be word for word where they're mixing or blending or comping in between different vocal takes. It really depends on the quality of the takes that you've recorded and of course what style or genre of music you're recording. You'll often get clicks and pops from edited audio parts, so it's important to highlight the parts and put a crossfade in. Now you can do this by hitting X on your computer keyboard and Cubase will automatically insert two fades one at the end of the event and one at the start of the next event, and that will remove any unwanted noise. I've zoomed right in so you can see that X there, and you can see that you can even edit the crossfade handles yourself. It is really handy that Cubase will automatically take care of the crossfades as long as I've got the events highlighted and press X on my keyboard. Now I'm just editing the end and the start events. I've put a fade on this first event here and I'm just moving the handle in the bottom left hand corner to make sure that that fades right into the start of the very first vocal note. As I've moved the event back, I can start to see the other vocal takes that are sitting behind it. So I'm just moving them back because if they play before the track, I'm likely to get more clicks and pops and more noise. I really only want to see the events that I have selected here up on top of my vocal track. A really on-trend technique at the moment when it comes to recording vocals or vocal production is to double a lead vocal part. In fact, every vocal part that you hear is likely to be doubled or tripled. So what I've done is created a duplicate track, which is exactly the same recording that I had before. Now you wouldn't normally use the same recording twice. You'd either re-record it on a new track or you'd come down here and you'd select another part to the original lead vocal. Now a double vocal will usually sit further back in the mix, so I've dropped the volume a little bit, not as much as I usually would. I've left it up a little bit so that you can hear that doubling effect. A human will never sing the same part perfectly twice, so there's always going to be a variation, and that's what gives us that nice chorusy type of sound. But the chorus sound may not be what you need in every verse. It might be something that you save for the chorus for greater impact. Well, for example, here we've got these oohs. Once you start recording more and more takes of these oohs, it's gonna give us a really huge choir effect and it's going to end up sounding like this. In addition to doing multiple takes, we could add something like a chorus insert or effect over the top of the doubled track. I'm leaving that first lead vocal untouched. So a chorus effect is basically a modulation, so it's even giving us more movement around that first lead vocal, making it sound more like a chorus effect. I'm just dropping that chorus insert down a slot, and I'm going to find some distortion. Now, Distortion sounds like something you should never use on a vocal, but in reality, it's used on a lot of lead vocals in contemporary production. And it just helps a vocal or a doubled vocal pop through the mix. 
it's a matter of messing around with the different parameters and trying to find something that works. Alerting me so clearly, awaiting patiently. It's also a matter of riding the volume on that double track with the distortion. Ambience is a huge part of vocal production. So things like reverbs and delays. I've quickly pulled a delay up on the lead vocal track. To start with the delay was too long, but now I'm shortening it and it's starting to sound pretty cool. I really like that delay, but it might be just getting in the road of my lead vocal track. So in the mix console, I can simply drag it over onto the double track to hear how it sounds over there. If you hold down Alt or Option, you can also copy inserts from track to track and the same settings will apply. It's really important to solo parts that you're working on so you can hear them in isolation as well as hearing them with everything else that's going on in your track. We're going to get into mixing in a later video, but just quickly I want to show you a few things in the mix console. First of all, you can EQ in a number of different windows in Cubase, but if you're working in the mix console, you can basically click here and now we can start to put an EQ setting in here, which is fairly typical for a lead vocal. In terms of EQ, it's important to filter out low-end rumble from microphones and then you can choose how much mid-range you want and of course the upper end of the EQ will give us air so it will brighten up the vocal. I'm just using the channel strip tab now and I've got access to the channel strip inside the mix console. Now the channel strip also comes with presets so if you're not too sure what you're doing this is a really good place to start. It's going to offer us an engineer's suggested combination of dynamics and an EQ. Now you can access the channel strip in a number of different places inside of Cubase. It's here in the mix console and it's also here in the channel overview window. So we can also load presets in this section here just by clicking on that little preset button. And as we move through the presets, you'll notice the changes that have been made inside the channel strip. You can open up the interface for the compressor and start taking control of the dynamics in the lead vocal. This is something we're going to talk about in a later video. And there you can see a fairly typical EQ curve for a vocalist. And as you hit play, you'll also start to see that frequency spectrum analysis going on in the background. So you can really see the frequencies that are sticking out in any recorded track. You can also access it here. So you can access it from any main window in Cubase and on the left hand side it's also housed in the inspector. Now that we've taken a look at how you can record a vocal and some basic editing principles, it's time to get in and record as many vocals as you can to make your vocal track sound huge. In the mixing video, we're going to take a look at how you can mix these vocals in with the rest of your track and we'll look at some techniques for mixing a lot of vocal parts in together. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Please like it if you've learned something and subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more just like this. I'll see you there.